You should be afraid. We might be in danger, but look, we've never been this close to having indisputable evidence. I talking beyond the shadows which is a kind of found footage movie and this one is uh directed and written by david david james gustafson and it's a similar setup to the movie grave encounters we have a group of paranormal investigators who do a kind of a tv show similar to the long lines of ghost hunters things like that but what they've done is all is all been fake, and they kind of obviously freely admit that, obviously off camera. And they decide that they're going to do this live show, uh, but they're also going to bring in a skeptic, a well-known skeptic, and try and uh, uh, to, to do disprove them, along with a few fans, whilst doing this particular kind of uh, haunted uh, hotel, I believe it is. And as you can probably imagine, things go slightly awry, awry once they get there. The movie, although I wouldn't call it a horror comedy, it has its tongue in cheek. It doesn't have this, um, uh, it doesn't really have jokes as such, maybe a few attempts at it, but it has a kind of qu not quite serious tone to it. Uh, so it's kind of a, a tongue in cheek movie without, a, without, without being an out and out horror comedy. So first of all, let's talk about what works in this movie. I actually think the setup was quite good. Now, it's it's obviously a very low budget movie, and the setup isn't original. It's practically the same as 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 Grave Encounters, but nonetheless, that is quite a strong setup for a for a film. And the what the one thing I did like was having the idea. It's having these ultimately three different groups of of people meeting at this kind of this hotel, and then divvying up into smaller groups to then film their parts. So we have. You know, members of this ghost hunting team who all know it's just a fact, you know, obviously a, a ruse. We have this group of skeptics who are, want to basically kind of shut this kind of like this this program down because they just, just see them as charlatans. And then we have three fans of the show who all are, you know, fanboying about the kind of the show because they, they love it so much and things like that. So to me, that made quite an interesting dynamic uh, to have these three sort of separate kind of parties within this kind of group, which I, th I found was quite kind of interesting. I also thought our, our group of ghost hunters had quite an interesting dynamic themselves because they're all kind of like frat boys and uh you know normally with these sort of programs you'll get a variety of different personality types you know you, you'll get the nerdy techie guy you get the, the, the you know all that sort of thing but our our kind of three main guys there's, i think there's like four guys and two girls uh but we don't really see much of one of the guys because he's the main cameraman and the two girls will come on to um, but the three main guys, they all seem quite kind of bro fratty type. Now, admittedly, that is they're quite annoying characters in that respect. But I actually thought it made some sense to have characters and, and, and these friends who are probably quite similar in their personalities. Because normally you'll get like this, you know, w weirdly diverse group of people who really didn't, you didn't feel like they would genuinely kind of get on all that well. But at least here, I thought that there was an attempt to have three similar, similar characters, uh, and, you know, they, there it goes. So I think this setup was relatively strong, and before we get to the actual house, the actual hotel, I thought, you know, it seems reasonable. It, it, it seemed to drag a little bit. It's not quite found footage, because we do see there are some camera angles that seem to be just normal kind of static cameras and things like that, and, uh, and then sometimes you're wondering, who's actually holding this kind of camera? But it's, it's mostly found footage, so I will class it as a found footage movie. However, once we get into the actual hotel itself, this is where I feel the movie really kind of starts to take a dive. Now, to be honest with you, even before then, uh, the movie is extremely low budget, and some of the acting is particularly hokey, particularly from some of the actors here. Uh, the guy, the main camera, or camera guy from the main guy, from the main sort of group of people, is a terrible actor, absolutely terrible actor. And then we have these two females, which I have no idea what they were doing there. Uh, there's these two women that kind of follow these group of ghost hunters, and I, I have no idea who they were. They just seem to hang around, not actually do anything, not contribute, 
and uh, are just there. And I didn't know what their purpose of their characters were, were at all. So that's my problems before we get to the, the, the kind of the hotel sort of situation. When we get to the hotel itself, we meet this character called Monty, who's like the caretaker of this hotel, who is the most kind of comedic person in, the, in, in this kind of uh, movie. And we, I don't know, he looks like he's in a different film. He, he's like, he's acting like Alan Tudyk, uh, to be honest. And it's just this bizarre character who is so over the top. It's just silly, which is, you know, I know it has this, like I say, it has this tongue and cheek uh, tone to it. But to me, although I think his character was quite amusing, it didn't really fit with the way the film was going. And it just made the whole thing seem a little, you know, you can't really take it seriously. However, when we get into the actual hauntings themselves, it just, it really falls apart. Uh, any kind of plot semblance, unfortunately, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, we have people getting killed and people, the rest of the characters seem to be very nonplussed about it. Um, we have extremely poor uh, ghostly effects. And the, the funny thing is, is that the, the real ghosts that we see in the, in the second half of the movie look more fake than the fake ghosts we see in the first half or in the, kind of the, in the intro in the, in the first part of the movie, which seem bizarre. Uh, there's some really poor edits uh, in regards to some of the kind of the deaths. Uh, we get deaths by, by various Native American implements, and it, we, we never actually see these, these things connect. So we get like an arrow in the eye, we get a, a tomahawk in the chest, and we only ever see someone kind of react when it's already in there. And obviously the edit is to kind of like, so that they can't, we can't see the point of impact. That's obviously a budget reason, but if they do it like, <laughs> they do it like three times, and it, you know, I think you can get away with that once, but you've got to write around that if you can't, if you can't afford to do these, um, these, these uh, special effects. Uh, there's also some really kind of quite obvious CGI effects as well. And again, if you can't afford to do it, don't do it because you can just do, just go without it. Um, there's, the, there's just some weird character moments. We have this medium who contributes absolutely nothing to the story. She's just there being weird. These two other women that follow and I'm around, again, they just seem to be having sex in the room. I'm thinking, who, who are these people? What are they actually doing there? Um, and then we have these, um, again, we have these, these fans and it seemed like a good idea, but nothing is really done with it. Because when we, our three skeptics they actually have interactions that are relevant to their characters, yeah? We have this, the, the main skeptic and the, well, the two main skeptics really are kind of like arguing against the, the, the ghost hunters and they have interactions that are to do with that and obviously they then start to believe that, that things are real. So we understand their character motive, there's a reason for them being there. The three fans don't really offer anything. They, they don't really seem to... Um, have anything to offer the story and you know, they could have just been uh, better written, had, had more to do and more to do with where they were coming from because it kind of didn't make a lot of, uh, lot of sense there. To be honest as well, the movie just seems to drag a little bit. Uh, it obviously just can't afford to do very much in this movie and, be and becomes a very kind of somewhat pale uh, comparison to the, gra the gra Grave Encounters, which... It's regarded as one of the better found footage movies, and to be honest with you, there are better found, there are better grave encounters clones. Uh, like I said, this one is is, is is a little bit more of a tongue in cheek without kind of being an overall sort of comedy. But I honestly don't think it's a particularly good film. I don't think it's particularly um, exciting, and because of its weird tone, it's it's neither a comedy nor a you know quite taking it seriously. You're not finding it funny, but you're also kind of not invested in any of the horror elements as well. So it sits in this kind of like this weird sort of tone where you don't care either way. Um, I think there was some interesting ideas here, and I think the setup isn't too bad. But ultimately, the film as a whole is a bit of a disappointment. I will give this one a 3 out of 10. Um... I just don't think it's a particularly uh, memorable entry into a uh, already crowded market with the kind of the found footage genres and even the kind of the Grave Encounter style movies. Three out of ten. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.